yourself and be broken in pieces assemble yourself from the east north south and west and be broken in pieces take your counsels in the regions of the sea and it shall come to naught speak your word and it shall not stand for god is with us first corinthians 3 1 and i brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual underline it though he said paul this was paul speaking i can i couldn't speak to you as spiritual people mm -hmm. but as unto carnal as even unto, as unto babes in christ as unto carnal when when you're a carnal christian you act like kids you are petty you are petty petty having issues with everything everybody you know are people in this church sometime a whole year two years i don't call them they don't hear from me i don't hear from them and it's fine it's everything is fine and when we meet it's like where we left it the last time we spoke you know somebody said you never called me and what's going on with you and i feel hurt i feel offended if you are spirit conscious eh? and you are hearing from god receiving from god there is so much to do with your time for god you will not have time quarreling and fighting i'm telling you all these fighting sometimes when i see christians fighting i i, I don't get it. It, it i don't get it it bothers me and i said don't they have time to do something with their lives what is all this petty quarreling and fighting and I don't trust this person and this one has hurt me and we are fighting over nothing, over nothing. Sometimes we fight over our political parties, we fight over what somebody is wearing and what somebody didn't wear. I mean, there are so many things that don't bother me. Some lady was in church the other day and she was wearing a skirt and it didn't look too great, you know, and somebody was saying that papa you have to start addressing these things and i said let me tell you something my preaching has nothing to do with what skirt somebody is wearing and what she's showing and what she's not showing that's not part of the word of god so i said you ladies to talk to them go talk to her i'm not going to waste my energy and anointing and time to be preaching about what ladies are wearing and what they are not wearing oh that is foolishness it's not part of the gospel if the brothers can't help themselves, let them be spiritual. Yeah, why are you looking? Why are you looking at a sister wearing? If, if looking there will give you trouble, just look somewhere. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, take a walk, take a walk. Look somewhere else. Don't come and provoke me to be teaching and rebuking ladies for what they are wearing and everything. I'm not watching those things. That is not part of my preaching. And I'm not encouraging ladies to just wear anything. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that I'm not going to come and stand in the pulpit here and tell you why are you wearing this kind of thing. You can come and sit right before me here and I'll still preach and be anointed because I'm not looking at you. I don't care. And I'm not giving you lashes to wear anything you want to wear. And I'm not also giving you lashes to come and sit before me here. That's not what I'm saying. But we have to be spiritual and stop being distracted by every little thing other than that the pulpit will become a place to be addressing perfumes and, you know, please. Let's make time for what is important. Amen? And, you know, I'll tell you something. When a man is tempted or a woman is tempted, it's not because of what somebody is wearing on. It's what is in you. The temptation is in you. Tell somebody it's in you. Tell somebody it's not the brother. It's not the plenty hair on the chest of the brother. Or the sister's shape. It's you. Do you know what? You see a lot of people talk about sin, sin, sin. Do you know what is the true cause of a sin? Whatever the sin is, is your flesh. You see, 
your flesh. If you can master your flesh and you can master yourself, you can overcome any temptation. It's you. So stop trying to tell me, talk to the sisters, they shouldn't show this, they shouldn't show that. Brother, you are the problem. It's your eyes. You are looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. When you can look at everywhere, you can even look at the heavens and the stars and the sun and the moon. And if you are in the building, look at the beautiful lights and the stars. <laughs> Why don't you put your hands together and give God praise, somebody? And sisters, I'm not giving you lessons to also wear anything and provoke people. That's not what I'm saying, no. So, no, don't say I should help them. Help yourself. Hmm? So that's the way it is. Instead of blaming somebody, somebody is tempting me. It's you. The temptation is in you. If you conquer yourself, you can conquer the person. I've been in a situation before many years ago in a beach where a young lady was literally naked. Literally naked. And she looked at me and said, what is wrong with me? And I said, what do you mean? She said, but I'm literally naked and you are not paying attention. And that got me to think. And I said, wow. So she wanted my attention. I've learned something. I learned it a long time ago. So I don't care what you wear, what you look at, what shape you are. I refuse to give you attention. Simple. Because if you don't deal with yourself, eh, you will always see something out there that will attract you. The problem is not the sisters. So stop blaming sisters. And sisters, stop blaming the brothers. The problem is not somebody. The problem is you. If you deal with you and develop self-control and mastering, it doesn't matter what you see, you can overcome it. Yeah. The problem is your flesh. Deal with it. Mm. Somebody say, mm. Okay, 1 Corinthians 3.3. 3. For you are yet carnal. Yet for where, carnal. Mm -hmm. For whereas there is among you envy. Look at it. Look at it. Oh. Look at the born again Christian. Holy Ghost filled. Water baptized. Tongue speaking. That is not spiritual. And look at what carnality is. Carnality. Living by your feelings. Your soul and your flesh. Look at, look at the indicators. They are very serious. And you can be a believer, Holy Ghost filled, very gifted, tongue speaking, water baptized, blood washed, heavily booked and confirmed, even with the address of your house in heaven and everything, and still be a carnal Christian. And look at the indicators. Go ahead. For whereas there is among you envy. Envy. Turn to somebody and say, are you envious? Don't answer me. I'm just asking you a question. Are you envious? Oh, yeah. Envy in the church. Envy in the church. Envy among Holy Ghost filled, baptized men, women, prophets, bishop, pastors, archbishops, apostles, name them. Evangelist, envy among us, envy. I see it every time among men and women of God. Envy, so unnecessary. Envy. Oh, I see them all the time. And sometimes the things people are envious of, I don't even want it. Do you hear what I said? Sometimes I see people fight me over things. They speak, they say all kinds of things about me because they are envious about something. And I tell myself, but I don't want it. I don't want it. They can have it. And they don't even know I don't want it. And they fight me over it. And blame me for the reason why they don't have it. Envy. And yet they are Holy Ghost filled. And why? strife. 
strive, 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 strive in the church, strive among Christians, strive between husband and wife and siblings, strive in the church, strive. All this is carnality. Soulish Christians. Go ahead. And divisions. Divisions in the church. Divisions in the house of God. I belong to Apollos. I belong to Paul. Bishop Oboda is my father. Mm. Some of you, you are Bishop Oboda disciples. Others are Bishop Nyakun's disciples. Some are Bishop James' disciples. And some are Archbishop's disciples. Where do you belong? Divisions. I like, mm, I like the way Bishop Obodine presents the word. Me, I like Bishop Obodine's style. Somebody say, I like Papa's style. Hey! I, I, did you come to church about style or the word of God? It's not about style. And we have divided the church. We have divided the church. Somebody said to me, he said, Papa, are you preaching on Wednesday? And I said, why? He said, I want to know if you are preaching, then I'll come. If you are not preaching, I won't come. And I rebuke her, and I said, what is wrong with you? What does me preaching have to do with you coming to church? Are you coming for me, or you are coming for Jesus, and you are coming for the word? Well, I just like your style of preaching. And if you are a carnal Christian, you think you are so important, you are so anointed. But you don't even know why she likes your style of preaching. You think everybody sitting down there hearing the word of God is really in for the word? Some people have their own imaginations as they hear you preach. I'm telling you. A sister in this church brought her friend to church. And when I finished preaching, they came to greet me. Then later, she called me and said, Papa, that my friend, she really likes you, Pa. And I said, what do you mean? She said, when you were preaching, she was sitting there. Do you see her move, her swag? And that was all she was saying during the time I was preaching. She didn't hear the word of God. And I said, Father, I repent. <laughs> uh, you know why I had to pray for repentance? Just in case the way I move and I do things is distracting her from hearing the word of God. So I say, Father, forgive me if I, I distracted her from hearing the word of God. Because it's possible. Oh yeah, it's possible. <clears throat> it's possible. There are some perfumes, I don't like using them. Because when you use it, it's so powerful that as soon as you pass by, anybody that comes after you can smell it. And any time I use them, people ask, Papa, what is the name of your perfume? What, what? And I realized that it's a distraction. So I said to myself, I'm not going to wear it. I don't need it. I don't need me distracting anybody. All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Are you there? Go ahead. Divisions. Divisions. It's a... For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? You see, you see, are you not carnal and walk as men? That's it. It's clear that you are not being spirit conscious. You are walking by your emotions, the flesh. Hallelujah. Galatians 5, 16 and 18. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You see, if you walk in the spirit, you will not follow the dictates of your flesh. Go ahead. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit uh -huh. and the spirit against the flesh. Mm -hmm. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you are, if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. And I'll show you why you, are, you will not be under the law if you are a spiritual Christian. Romans 8, 5 to 8. 
for they are for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh uh -huh. they mind the things of the flesh they mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit uh -huh. for to be carnally minded is death mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace mm -hmm. because the carnal mind is enmity against god they are in longer heads mm -hmm. For it is not subject to the law of God. It's neither not in, subject, rebellious. Mm -hmm. Neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, this script is scary. Mm. They cannot what? Please God. Talk to me. They cannot what? Please God. Say cannot. Cannot. Say it a few times. Say cannot. 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 What it means is that it is impossible. To please God. They cannot. They cannot. They cannot. They can't be at peace with God themselves, with anybody. They cannot. It is impossible. Because they are loggerheads one with another. They cannot. Galatians 5, 22 to 25. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Look, look, look at, look at, look at spiritual people. Look at the indicators. If you're a spiritual person, look at the things, the benefits of spirituality and spiritual growth and spiritual maturity. Look at it. Number one, love. 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 You love. You love all people. You may not like all people, but you just have to love them. I don't like a lot of people. I don't like some people's their attitude. There are so many things I don't like about people, but I have to love them. I love you. Tell somebody I love you. I love you. Now, if it's somebody's wife, be careful. Because you see, a spiritual person will just say, I love you, and that is it. But a carnal and a soulish person will say, I really love you, girl. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Okay, go ahead. Joy. 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 Joy is one of the benefits of spiritual growth, spiritual development, and spirituality. Go ahead. Peace. 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 In the midst of the storm. Peace. When there is trouble all around you, that peace. Peace inner sense of security tranquility and calmness go ahead long suffering long suffering you can take a lot i was telling pastors who were graduating yesterday and i said ministry is tough i told them i said ministry is tough and i said hey if you are in the ministry because of money resign go and find a job and do ministry part-time this is not about money it's not it's about souls it's about souls, people, souls. The most expensive commodity on earth, souls. And it cost God the blood of his son to redeem and to buy souls. So I said, if it is something else than souls, don't graduate. Go and find a job. And I said, if you want to be rewarded, you want to be recognized, you want to be accepted, and you are the type who wants attention recognition this is the wrong business go find something else because this is a thankless job the same people who say hosanna to the son of david will say crucify him crucify him. all it takes i tell pastors all the time i said if you have never had a scandal or a stigma before you're a kid you are an amateur i'm telling you but when scandal hits you and you still have people standing with you after that storm, God has blessed you. You are very blessed, I'm telling you. Especially in this country. When you go through scandal, I've seen people in this church, there are some here right now, heavily misrepresented. See their name in the news, in the media, everywhere. And what is being told and said about them is a lie lie a lie and yet 
Some people will believe it. And when you try to defend them, you yourself will come under attack. So we are creating a society where you can't defend the innocent and the perishing. Everybody is afraid to stand up for his or her neighbor because they will come after you. So we, 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 we have a society where if somebody is drowning, you stand by and let them drown because if you try to rescue, they will come after you. Listen, I will not stand by and see somebody drowning and do nothing about it. It's cowards who do that. And I'm not a coward. Tell somebody you are not a coward. Tell somebody stand up for others. Stand up for others. Amen. Go ahead. Gentleness. 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 Not foolishness. So. It's the difference between being foolish, being a fool, and being gentle. Go ahead. Goodness. 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 It's all part of spirituality. You see, when you look at all of this, and sometimes people think that if you are that way, something is wrong with you. You have to be aggressive. You can't be aggressive and still be good to people. I'm, I'm a lion. I'm a lion, but I'm also a lion. You got to learn to be kind and good to people. And sometimes, if I follow my flesh, I don't want to be nice to some people at all. I think I just have to be mean and that is what they deserve. But that is not what a spiritual man or a spiritual woman does. Goodness. Go ahead. Faith. Having faith in God. Faith in God. Not being fearful or a coward, but having faith in the mix of challenges and crises. Go ahead. Meekness. What is meekness? Strength or power under control. Strength or power under control. So you have power, but you don't use it. You don't defend yourself. I was telling the bishops and the pastors the other day, and I said, it's dangerous to have delegated authority. Very dangerous to have spiritual authority. Very, very dangerous. Because you can kill people, you can destroy people, and you can misrepresent God. When Moses was commanded to speak to the rock, and he did it, and he smote the rock twice, God said, Moses, two things. Number one, Aaron, your brother, remove his garments, his robes, remove him from the office and let him die. And after that, God said, you too, go up to the mountain, look at the land of promise, Canaan. You serve 40 years, another 40 years, 80 years. You see it, you won't get in there and die. I mean, to serve God is very, it's serious, so it's scary. Die. And Moses also died. And it was a simple thing he did. Speak to the rock, smote the rock, and God said, you misrepresented me to my people. You abuse delegated authority. And I was telling them that if you truly have spiritual authority, and you don't fight and defend yourself. God fights and defends you. Because when Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses, Moses didn't defend himself. It was God who defended Moses. And God said to Miriam and Aaron, were you not afraid to speak against Moses, my servant, seeing that he commands and has delegated authority? God said to them, were you not afraid? And leprosy came on Miriam. God dealt with them. Moses didn't have to fight. If you are working in delegated authority, you don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to explain yourself. If you are really representing God and his delegated authority, you don't fight for yourself. It's wrong to fight for yourself. It's misuse of power and misuse of authority.
If you have delegated authority, God fights your battles. Oh, yeah. He does. Okay, finish. Temperance. Temperance. Uh huh. Against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. Temperance. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections and lust. Crucifixion of the flesh. And I'm telling them that there are two sources of authority. One, authority is a product of revelation. Somebody say authority. Say true authority is a product of revelation. Another source of authority is resurrection. See, resurrection. Before Jesus died, they called him Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. When he rose from the dead and he had resurrection power, he had authority. They changed his name to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Bible said, watch this, the Bible said, at the mention of his name, every knee in heaven, the knee of everything in heaven and earth shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That is authority. That was derived from resurrection. And there is no resurrection without death. You have to die to self, die to something if you want to walk in revelation power and have authority, then you have to die to reputation, you have to die to self, you have to die to something. I used to be very conscious of repu my reputation many years ago and I came under such media attack and it went on for 10 years and one day I said to the Lord, when will this affliction leave you? He said, the day you stop being sensitive about your reputation, it will end. I said, wow. Reputation. So I lost my reputation long time ago because now I understand that if you are going to be spiritual and work for God, you'll be misrepresented. Even in the church. Even in the church. And even in my own churches and here, I don't expect every one of you to agree with me. I don't. Because I know the level of spirituality in the church. I know those who are carnal, I know those who are soulish, and I know are spiritual so i don't expect you to agree with me i don't i give you the benefit of the doubt and i don't expect everybody to love me because there are different levels of spirituality and maturity in the church hmm. why you look at me that way first corinthians chapter 2 Verse 15, we'll stop here and we'll continue on Wednesday. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Look at it all. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Simple. He that is spiritual judges all things and no man judges him. That's it. Simple as that. If you're a spiritual person, you will judge all things by the spirit and no man judges you. Make a decision this week that you'll be a spiritual person. Be led by your spirit. I've been in a situation where people came to me and the spirit said to me, they are here to set you up. They are here to set you up, so don't say anything. And I had the spirit and I know his voice. Then my flesh and my soul keeps agitating say something say something don't just listen say something Archbishop say something turn to somebody and say say something because not saying anything and just listening it makes you look like some zombie, some fool just sitting there, just listening. And especially when the Spirit has given you advanced knowledge. 
that they are here to set you out then my soul my flesh will say say something tell them you know why they are here you know what i said do what tell them you think i don't know why you came you are here to set me up and sometimes i will endure through it long suffering i will go through and they will leave and i feel peace and there are times when i've missed it and i'll try to say something in a different way can you people tell me why you came here what is the main reason why you came i've exposed the spirit he was giving me an information and a secret and i've exposed it and then when they leave i feel some way feel bad i feel some way but my intellect tells me you are smart you see what i'm saying you are what smart the bible says, let him that wants to be wise in this world become a fool that he may be wise Sometimes to be spiritual, eh, it, could, it can make you weird. People look at you some way like you don't know what's going on. You are joking. I know a lot. Oh yes, I do. I know a lot. But I've also learned to ignore a lot of things. I'd rather be irrelevant to man and be relevant to God than to be relevant to man and to be irrelevant to God. Now, thank you for clapping, even though I didn't ask you to clap the way you, you are looking at me some way, you know. Today is not those kind of fiery, powerful messages. I see you with the wings of an eagle. Say yes, somebody. I'm not preaching that kind this today. I'm telling you, be spiritual. Be spiritual. If you are at peace, eh, you'll be at peace with others. I see things every day that must irritate me, vex me, and provoke me. But I just overlook. I overlook. And I see attitudes every day, even among the staff, among workers, pastors, bishops. I see so many things and sometimes it just bothers me and I say, God, what's going on here? And I just say to myself, you know something? It is well. I'm not going to lose my peace over anything. Do the same. Make up your mind this week. That I will be a spiritual Christian and not a carnal Christian. Build bridges, build relationships. Stand. that there's an action chapel near you wherever you are stay connected to your family by logging on to www.actionchapel.net and click on branches you can also watch all of our services live by logging on to www.actionchapel.tv action chapel welcome home If you consider your pain and betrayals and you consider yourself and your immediate family, you will never sow and you will withhold what God has given you for the benefits of others and one day you will answer to God. Like Archbishop Duncan Williams on Facebook and receive inspiring prayers and messages every day. Log on today and see you online. David said, because I've set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God gold for the things of gold and silver for the things of silver and the seed.